last year, based on an industry survey by EY, Private equity CFOs have stated that enhancing back office processes and technology as amongst the top three strategic priorities besides asset growth. Today, we have Stephanie, the legal counsel and representative of eBravia, a legal tech company under Donnelly Financial Solutions, also known as DFIN, specializing in contract review. She oversees the APEC region, and regularly works with lawyers on integrating the platform into their practice. She's also a lecturer at U Law and teaches the legal ethics and professional practice course. Prior to joining eBravia, she practiced as a corporate lawyer at Reed Smith Richards Butler. Hello, Stephanie. Could you give us a quick intro of what DFIN is and does? Sure. So uh, thank you for the introduction, Valerie, and thank you for arranging this session today. So um, just to give you a background, so DFIN as a group, what it does is it's a provider of various financial solutions to companies in uh, throughout the life cycle. So from the inception for financial printing and IPOs to, you know, helping them with the ongoing obligations to helping them and providing solutions for the future transactions. And specifically, what Ibravia does is it looks to the problem of documents. So I'm sure you would be aware, you know, with uh, in the deal cycle, what a, a big pain and a struggle would be uh, having to review and deal with large amounts of documents. So what Ibravia does is uh, using AI, specifically the branch of machine learning, uh, to review and to help us gain visibility into all of these uh, documents, so which uh, I'm, I'm excited to tell you a little bit more uh, later on. Yeah. Okay, so firstly, can you give us an overview of how tech enabled deal making has evolved beyond just you know scheduling on electronic connect calendars, meetings, and using Zoom calls, especially with the onset of the pandemic? Yeah, so I would say with the PE industry, um, historically speaking, it is quite a, a, an industry industry that relies very heavily on you know people relationship, on uh, intuition and institution knowledge, and so uh, this is specifically the case where you know when they source deals and generate deals. And then, you know, as we move along the deal cycle, we get to uh, the due diligence part, the M&A aspects of it. And again, you know, traditionally speaking, this has been a very manual process that involves, you know, a laborious and very tedious kind of work. You know, uh, not that long ago, we are still using, say, physical data rooms to, you know, host all of these documents, doing on-site visits, and just, you know, manually reviewing these documents from scratch. And then um, as we move along, you know, after, you know, post acquisition, you know, the tracking of information in portfolio companies, again, uh, traditionally speaking, it's a manual process where, you know, uh, PE companies would be just tracking information using, uh, say, Excel spreadsheets. But what we see is that um, in the recent years, times have changed. And of course, with the pandemic, it was a big push. So at a very basic level, what we see is uh, PE firms are starting to move towards a more uh, digitized environment where you know, they're using an environment where uh, it facilitates collaboration and uh, you know, starting to automate their workflows and just adoption of uh, solutions to um, help with uh, increasing the operational efficiency. But then going a step further, apart from, you know, using these solutions and what they are doing uh, is, uh, say, for example, you know, in the deal sourcing uh, phase, you know, data is gold, data is important. So what we see is, um, you know, say, for example, uh, solutions like, you know, to data scrap from, you know, public um, avenues uh, to, to gather information or say, for example, you know, PE firms subscribing to third party platforms like Data Vantage and, um, you know, or, or even using AI or analytic solutions to, you know, generate uh, industry trends. Uh, these are also things that we see. And then uh, for the manual and very laborious um, aspects, say due diligence, what we see is, uh, for example, also using AI to speed up this uh, process. And, um, and so this is exactly, you know, what Ibravia's forte is also as well. Yeah. You have addressed, you know, how AI um, is uh, helping to 
address the pain points in the process. Um, so, you know, while AI and machine learning are terms that are frequently bandied about in tech discussions, how are they moving the needle on the deal making process? Yeah, great question. So I would say, um, you know, ultimately when uh, in the deal process, ultimately what we are really concerned with uh, are, you know, time and cost. And, um, you know, say, for example, from where I am sitting, uh, you know, working at Ibravia and AI at analytics company that specializes in say textual analysis what we see is um you know a general pain point throughout you know the deal process is having to comb through just hundreds and thousands of documents and uh, this is a painful and manual and expensive process you know be it from the due diligence phase to later on you know tracking um you know of, of information uh you know in the portfolio management phase and these all translate to you know time and cost difficulties. And so what we see with uh, technology is that it allows you to do this uh, very quickly at a much cheaper rate and allow you to, you know, gain more visibility and transparency in, in that. And um, also, you know, it also from a risk management perspective, uh, we see that, you know, this is something that's um, very helpful. So say, for example, in the PE context, a lot of times uh, what we will encounter is a very charismatic uh, startup founders, you know, painting a rosy picture of, you know, what the company is doing. But, um, you know, what PE firms then uh, to, to a certain degree is to then rely on the relationship and uh, intuition and take that leap of faith. And what we see is with technology uh, tools like Ibravia using AI to help you sort through and you know review and go through all of these documents uh, as a verification process. It offers more comfort for you and allows you to have a more um, you know reassuring and fact-based uh, approach when making an investment decision. So I think. Um, these are, you know, some important uh, points and takeaways on, you know, how AI or just technology generally is moving uh, the needle uh, in, in the PE context. So just now you mentioned uh, about, you know, um, investors using the intuition and connection as part of the due diligence process. Um, how then, you know, can they deploy pre-deal um, intelligence uh, using technology? And uh, what are some of the benefits in terms of time, cost savings, and risk uh, mitigation specifically? Mm, so I guess your question is really asking, you know, uh, how, how uh, you know, say, for example, AI is helping, you know, these sort of uh, pre-deal preparations and Correct. due diligence. Yeah. So, so, so I think, uh, you know, uh, to give you, uh, you know, for example, an example is, um, you know, how, how eBrevia works is essentially using artificial intelligence, uh, specifically the sub-branches of uh, machine learning and uh, natural language processing. Uh, and how it works is it is taught uh, to identify the context to, uh, you know, pick out important data points uh, in, you know, these documents. So say, for example, ones like change of control, like indemnity, uh, assignment, force majeure, and so on, and uh, to extract these. And why it's important to do these is, um, so typically in the due diligence process, what makes it so expensive and difficult is that, um, say, for example, for customer contracts in a, a company, uh, they come in you know, different formats and uh, different ways of drafting it. And uh, for you know, these type of, you know, when doing legal DD, uh, these, type, th these type of uh, you know, concepts can be uh, hidden in different parts of the contracts. Uh, so say, for example, a change of control clause can be expressed in a way about assignment or, you know, in a way about, say, consolidation and mergers. And that is what makes it difficult because you have to go through it page by page, phrase by phrase to, you know, flag up anything that might be, you know, red flags. So that is, uh, you know, an area that we see uh, where, you know, technology can speed up this process and lower the costs. And um, the more important thing I would say, you know, especially in, in with machine learning is that uh, it allows you to, uh, you know, evolve constantly. So say, for example, if you did, um, you know, due diligence in a particular uh, industry, uh, in a particular industry uh, company in a particular industry, 
what it does is it learns from that experience and you can continuously build up new models for that and you can apply that to your next deal. So that is why um, we see how, uh, you know, with machine learning, it's able to help with the due diligence process to help you, you know, save time and cost and, uh, you, know, a, 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 you know, accrue and accumulate benefits in the long run. And also what we see is it's good at uh, risk management. So um, say, for example, uh, one of an example that we hear from uh, one of our clients is that um, they were originally presented by a founder that uh, this company uh, has a very strong ARR, um, so annual uh, recurring revenue. And, um, you know, by using Ebrevia to go through all of the customer contracts and to pick out, you know, the terms and duration of these contracts, they actually found out uh, the term and duration uh, lasted for, you know, only six months or even shorter. So this brings the question of, you know, should this even be counted as ARR? So that is why um, we see from a risk management perspective, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, AI and technology is also, you know, helpful to help you to do the due diligence, a full-fledged DD in a, in a very short period of time to offer a more fat-based, um, you know, investment decision-making process. And, um, and of course, you know, uh, time savings is important, especially if, you know, you're caught in an auction bid situation, uh, you it's a race against time. So, um, so yeah, so in short, I would say, uh, you know, these, uh, these are, you know, how technology can help with, you know, in terms of time savings, cost savings, and just uh, from a risk management perspective, uh, at the due diligence phase, I would say. I'm sure the discovery and the insights that's garnered from this um, AI is really helpful. Mm. Um, what about post-acquisition and at the disclosure to investor or LP stage? How do the issues in these stages bring up change and how are they resolved by technology and AI-enabled deal-making? Yeah, so when we move along the deal cycle to um, post-acquisition, uh, an important point that we will be doing is, um, you know, to generate value. And, um, and what we see is, um, to give you an example, so um, another client of ours, what they did is um, after post-acquisition, they also used Ibravia and applied them to all of their contracts. And what they found out was um, they uncovered that uh, actually the contracts had a clause that allowed them to have surcharges and increase in charges uh, every year for their clients. But actually this was not found out uh, in the diligence uh, phase. And so it was not factored in the valuation and so that is why, uh, you know, these are ways uh, for you to, you know, uh, uncover, you know, business opportunities and also, you know, a new revenue streams. And um, so, so that is why we see that uh, in the post-acquisition phase, um, you know, it's important to, you know, track information, track obligations and, you know, key information of portfolio companies that we see, um, you know, technology is able um, to, to help with. Yeah. With all the benefits that you've highlighted, um, and the fact that P firms often urge their investing companies to digitalize, many of their own processes are still manual. So what are some of the pushbacks or reasons for this, you believe, and how does the change process begin? Um, so, <laughs> so that's a good question. And I would say, you know, um, you know, as to why, uh, you know, PE firms are relatively, you know, conservative, I would say, you know, first of all, uh, mentality wise, I think just people generally do not like changes. And uh, that's not limited to the PE industry. So say, for example, me coming from a legal background, uh, that's also the case. People just generally are not prone and gravitate towards, you know, big changes. But also, I would say um, the digitization process is a difficult one. And often it's, a, you know, a very big process that is um, hard to implement uh, if you don't go in with um, a strategy. So um, I would say, uh, you know, these are some of the reasons why uh, there, you know, people might not be, uh, you know, very gravitating towards change. But I would say, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, how we should be approaching it, um, I think, first of all, uh, from a mentality perspective, um, I think typically in the PE industry, uh, people, you know, pride in, you know, it's a relationship business. But um, 
it's mindful, uh, you should be mindful to remember that, uh, you know, technology is not here to replace human beings or to replace any human efforts. Uh, the great news is technology is not there yet, and a human effort is still very much relevant and very valuable. But um, so technology, what we should see it is not uh, to replace human effort, but really to augment human effort. And so uh, rather than comparing humans against machines, it's really, you know, what technology, uh, what we can achieve uh, with the help of technology. So that's kind of a mentality change. And then going to, you know, practical steps of, you know, what we can then do. So uh, I would say, you know, typically the digital transformation process, it's a lengthy one. So definitely, uh, you know, look internally, analyze your workflow processes, break it down, and then uh, prioritize what really needs to be done. And then secondly, uh, when we say go out to the external vendors, uh, you know, there are a lot of options. And the difficulty we see with a lot of companies is, um, you know, which ones should we choose? And um, I think uh, some, some tips that uh, we would offer is say, for example, you know, definitely go for a, a vendor that has, um, you know, the specialty knowledge uh, in the industry that you're working in. And so say, for example, in Ibevia, uh, it's a full lawyer team. And, uh, you know, we have lawyers that come from a PE background, uh, from, you know, private practice background in different areas. And what we see is uh, clients really like that because um, this transformation process, it's a difficult one. And you don't want to only just buy a one-off product, but you want uh, some advisory or consultancy element that would handhold you and help you brainstorm and work hands-on with you uh, to, to, to you know, uh, implement that into your organization. And then um, also, you know, um, Lastly, it's uh, sometimes it's a difficult process to kind of push through, you know, digital transformation within your organization. So, uh, you know, start small, start with one or two projects, uh, you know, do a deep dive analysis, garner, you know, the ROI, uh, you know, return on investment, so that, you know, you have more uh, metrics and statistics uh, to, 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 to you know, support that. And then that's also an easier way to kind of push it uh, towards the rest of the organization as well. Well, um, the District Asia research team has noticed that the lines between PEBC firms are also blurring and going after the same good targets in the region. Recently, you know, the US-based VCs and even tech firms are eyeing growth stage companies in the region. With their ability to write checks faster and even bigger ones, how do you think smaller local or regional focused VC firms can compete using AI or tech? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, yeah. so I would say, you know, we definitely see, you know, larger PE firms, uh, you know, spending you know, millions of dollars every year, you know, to build their own models. Um, and, uh, you know, in say, for example, for deal sourcing, you know, analyzing uh, the market trends and so on. And, um, but I would say, you know, for smaller uh, VCs, um, you know, do not, uh, you know, be hopeless in that because there are also, you know, readily available uh, solutions out there already for use. So I would say, you know, um, you know, to compete, uh, you know, start with some low hanging fruits. So say, for example, you know, look into your work uh, flow processes and see if anything that can be digitized, be automated, you know, start with these easy processes and uh, you can already, you know, see uh, a big, you know, um, improvements. So say, for example, you know, some firms that we've worked for, um, what we hear back is, um, you know, with only, you know, automating, say, uh, the manual processes of due diligence, they already found the whole deal to be sped up by, you know, 60 to 70 percent in time. And that already is a huge saving in terms of time and cost. So, uh, you know, start with the low hanging fruits. And, um, and I think uh, that would be, you know, the first step uh, for you to, you know, continuously to stay uh, competitive and relevant. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much for sharing. And I'm sure um, the regional VCs and PE firms will find this uh, very useful in thinking through uh, what are the steps and how they can choose their vendors. Um, lastly, Stephanie, um, where do you see the future of AI and tech processes heading? Mm. So yeah, so I, I think in this context, um, I would say we are in, uh, you know, this 
era where you know there's data expansion and uh, there's not going to be any less uh, data uh, tomorrow and uh, that's so so that's really the direction that we are heading so um I think, uh, you know, it, it, previously, uh, the default is, you know, doing things manually, and uh, the exception would be, you know, adopting technology, whereas um, what I see in the future is uh, it's, it would be kind of a flip, where, you know, uh, the default would be, you know, to use technology uh, to, to, you know, lower cost and, and to streamline and automate your processes, and it would be an exception not to, and uh, we would say that, um, and as predicted by, you know, a lot of the reports by, you know, say, Big Four and so on is that uh, that's the direction we are heading and um so i think this is um you know something to, that we have to keep in mind and you know stay prepared for um so that you know uh, you know companies can just maintain their relevance and um competition you know going down the road so that's where we, we see you know the future heading thank you stephanie it was a wonderful um session to share your knowledge with us yeah, thank you very much valerie thank you If you have any questions for Stephanie or are interested in using AI analytics to speed up contract review and management processes, please visit the DFIN virtual booth at the summit.